All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. We are out in what I used to call the Freedom Shack. It is currently now the Freedom Disaster. Probably need to spend a couple days out here cleaning up, getting rid of some stuff and uh, decluttering and everything. But this is the reloading side over here. This is the building side over here. This looks like it's turned into a lawn care center. And this looks like it turned into, well, I don't know. <laughs> In any case, what are we doing here? Well, today, I, I just wanted to get back to the basics of uh, what we were planning on doing. So this is a three-gun rifle that I put together last year. Uh, actually, the lower is the JP rifle that I use on the Ultimate uh, High Performance that rifle that I, uh, I used for the uh, Snipers Unknown. And guys, that rifle, the particular upper and this lower, we were able to achieve with uh, well, Nexus 77 grain, a .38 MOA at 100 yards with that rifle. That thing, it was just so amazing. So let's just go over a couple things that we have here. We've already done a couple of this. Bravo B5, I've got the CMMG pulling handle, uh, Fab Defense uh, grip, which I won't be changing out on this rifle. We are going to do a couple modifications or a couple upgrades on this thing, which is really interesting. This is one of the reasons why we're doing this video. Trigger Tech, uh, Proof Research Barrel, uh, Ultradon. Ultradon makes the absolute best uh, muzzle brakes there are. There's an adjustable. This is the Apollo S. Previously, I was running just the Apollo. The ventricles uh, on the Apollo S are like this, okay? The Apollo, they're like this. And one of the things that I was experiencing in my last three gun event, which literally was Memorial three gun, uh, I was getting a lot of gas back up in the handguard. And what that does in a really sunny morning, if you're facing the sun, boys, I'll tell you what, it, it, it limits your visibility for sure. So we've made that adjustment here. Uh, we're on, we're going to be running this thing called uh, carry optics, which will enable me to run a, uh, uh, well, what do you call that thing? A, a, a damn bipod. Okay. We're going to be doing the Atlas. Okay. So what are we doing for this thing? Uh, first thing we're going to do with this rifle is I've received this guy right here. This is the, uh, primary arms. This is their new, uh, 2.04 in height, uh, scope mount. And what is that going to enable me to do? This is the regular 1.5. And it's going to raise this guy up, okay? That will enable me to do the following. Instead of getting down real low on it like this, which a lot of times you have to tilt your head forward, you've got glasses on, you're down here. You guys, if you shoot a lot, you know what I'm talking about. That extra half inch can bring me up here, where I go from here to here. So I'm in my vase is a more vertical position, enabling me to catch more of what's in the optic Versus if you're in a prone position, you're down here. This is going to be up here like this. Uh, if you're in an awkward position or if you're in a CQB position. Okay, so that's the reason we've done that. And the guys over there, Primary Arms, thanks very much for sending us out here. Uh, $279 for this guy. It's not cheap. Uh, one of the gentlemen who watches the channel suggested Scalar Works. Scalar Works, that's about $479. Close to, well, $400 and change. Uh, I run a spur on the other upper for this guy. Scalar Works makes some incredibly good optic uh, mounts, but uh, <laughs> I'm sponsored by the guys over there at Primary Arms, so that's why we're going to do this. So anyway, I'm going to do a real quick review on this. We're going to back it up over here to the review table. We're going to do some measurements. Uh, then I'm going to do some other upgrades, and we'll go over that in a separate video with the guys over there at Armaspec. Uh, I am not going to change this out because I'm actually in this and i can't take it apart i'm not going to risk it but anyway i'm running a jp uh sonic capture spring in here it's already been weighted and tested everything's approved on this rifle i have to test it this week because i'm running out of time and i have the perfect amount of 77 grain uh of rounds that i need to actually align at 200 yards with this op this mount okay so anyway let's get over here on the review table and we'll talk about it stand by here we go all right, guys, here we are. We're on the review table, and I'm so happy to have this guy cleaned up and ready to go because we've got a lot of stuff we want to do reviews on. It's just getting back to the basics of what this channel was the established on, not politics, but actual gun stuff. So here it is. This is the primary arms cantilever mount centerline height of 2.404 inches. Okay, why do you want to do that? Well, again, like I said, you want to bring that cheek weld up. You want to get into more comfortable firing position. Uh, for awkward positions and uh, CQB. So this is the, uh, what do you call this thing? The primary guy, this is the uh, PLX, is it the 1.5? Now you can tell that by looking at it right there. Okay, so 
let's do this. I'm going to open this guy up. This has a clear anodized finish on it, which is really, really neat looking. It's going to set it apart really cool, make the gun flash while it's out there. So it does come with two tools. You have a small uh, torque wrench and the standard large torque wrench. I like that the guys over at Primary Arms basically have all of their equipment standardized with this guy right here. It makes it simple for adjustments because if you have one of these, say for instance, this is my Borka kit. I have one of these guys sitting in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. And a front sight post deal. We're going to go over some of the things that I have in here. I've changed this up a bit because I don't necessarily have the items that uh, would entail serious, you know, scope mounting. But these, this is my service kit. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about that later on. All right, so here we go. Let's open it up. It comes just like this. And voila, there it is. This thing is really, really nice. When I first saw it, and uh, the, the red-headed three-gunner. What in the world is this channel name? I saw him. He was from the Scale Works, okay? Elevated. He does have some pretty good sponsorships, so that's not a bad thing for him. Uh, this guy right here, well, basically, Primary Arms. I run all their stuff on my three-gun equipment, and they're proud to send this stuff out to me. Not that I'm a... <laughs> A very good three gunner is my uh, my age increases. I'm not able to jump as far as I used to, but it's always nice to have this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you basically this. Let me see if I can find a flat surface so that you can see the angle of the dangle. Pick up your dangle, dangle tie it to your shirt. So look, there's the difference. That's the height difference. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's a little over a half inch, okay? And it does measure up quite a bit. So let's talk about this thing, just the height, the deal. What do we got going on here? Five recoil lugs, boom. You have five recoil lugs, okay, you got, oh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, these things are rated up to 6,500 pounds. Uh, they're grade 12.9 hard rail capable of 6,500 pounds. There's, uh, let's see here. The machine billet, 7075T6 aluminum, strong and lightweight, zero minute of angle. Okay, what do they mean by that? So this is basically an upper receiver port part. I'm not trying to assemble a gun here. I'm not trying to modify a rifle or anything else. So the, the guys over at YouTube, please don't think that, okay? Uh, wake up, smell the coffee. So what I am going to show you guys real quickly is this. Stand by while I loosen these guys up. The minute of angle. Now, we've talked about this before, right? Uh, one of the things is I want to see if these screws, and they have not been loosened up. Look at that. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Watch this. I got this little wrench here from the Vorka kit. These are really, really nice. High quality. And they have a little rotating knob here that you can use. Okay. There. Okay, so minute of angle. You can have a 20 minute of angle uh, built into your uh, scope mount. But that means that basically this thing is sitting flush like this. If these two right here, this plane here and this plane here are in alignment, that's zero minute of angle. You can have something that's built in and it's exaggerated, okay, where they have a 20, 20 minute of angle built in and it's here to here. And that's so that you can dial more in. If you're dialing with a scope, that's what you want. I'm not. We're gonna put this guy right here and here and set it up. It is gonna be so much fun. But anyway, thanks to the guys over there at Primary Arms. Thanks to Mitri, good friend. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is the workmanship and the the CNC machine parts are amazing. Now I've seen some wannabe Jap Chinese model models of this thing. This is made in America. Uh, this guy's basically pretty much awesome. But I've seen some Chinese made stuff, and you'll see. All the machine marks, it's just nasty as it could be. And of course, instead of you know $279 or whatever this thing runs, uh, you're paying $29 for those guys downstairs. So anyway, let's get busy. I can't show the mounting because they consider mounting a scope as modifying a firearm, which is a no-no uh, with the boys over there at YouTube. So let's go ahead and put this thing on here. I'm gonna use my typical tools that I would to make sure that this scope is perfectly in alignment with this plane surface right here, which should be in perfect alignment with this guy right here. We will modify and we'll check. Now here's the thing, uh, <laughs> to another thing. Will this change your point of impact versus doing this? Yes. So what you're going to have to do is go back to the range. And what I would typically do 
with the ACSS Radical. By the way, this is the ACSS Raptor, which is my favorite optic to use for three gun. You really need to take it out to the range and calibrate it out to 200 yards. So your point of impact uh, and zero is going to be a 200 yard zero. You can go ahead and set it up with a 50 yard, and I'm running 77 grain with this, okay? Bowtail hollow point, uh, like the guys over there at Callaway Ballistics are gonna be providing all the ammo for this thing, minus the shotgun shells, which I need to get over to Walmart because I do have some SS. Uh, so anyway, you have to adjust your point of impact to 200 yards. Once you're on that, it should work perfectly all the way out because again, what you're doing is you're trying to find that meeting point between your scope and the rise and the fall of that round. So anyway, I'm gonna put this on here. Let's take a look at it after we get it on, stand by. All right, I was taking this thing apart and then I realized there's a reason that this guy right here is out here. <laughs> and there's a reason this guy's here, uh, but we already know this is a half inch more. Um, so the original PLX scope, we were really proud about that thing because it only weighs six ounces, which is really cool. Uh, a lot, some people may ask, what's the increased added weight by rising this thing up with the additional, additional aluminum? Okay, check this out. Only a half ounce. Uh, so the ultimate deal with this rifle is to try to keep it as light as possible, hence the carbon fiber. I know a lot of people are going to jump on me about you know using the M4A1 uh, upper from the guys over there at Aero Precision and JP, but I really, that's, that's not, it's the swing. I don't middle mind what the middle part of the rifle weighs, but it's a swing. You want to swing fast, okay? Let's mount this bad boy. Stand by. Uh, all right, guys, just a couple more cups of coffee, and uh, I think my I'll be right in the head. I have been looking for nail clippers all day long, and they got stuck to the magnetic part of this guy. We're going to be talking about this. This is the lifesaver if you're a three-gunner. This is what you want, because resetting targets, pasties, and everything else is fun. But picking up holes is even more fun with this guy. All right, so uh, if you shoot three gun, you know what I'm talking about. So here we are, man. We got uh, 2.04 inches uh, to the center line above the flat space on your upper receiver. What does that do? It gives us, again, a lot better, easier angle for your cheek weld right here. Awkward positions going in like this, leaning forward, going back. Also CQB, you use it more as a red dot. As you can see, a lot of the tactical guys are going with the higher riser, and that's why you're going to see a lot of people going with this. So with that, thanks to the guys over at uh, Primary Arms for sending this out. Uh, we're in a rush. We're in a hurry to get this thing done. We're, I think, ahead of the game, uh, with the exception of going out and getting some more shotgun shells. Got plenty of slugs. We're ready to go there. And that's it. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little series. We're going to be doing this guy next. This is the Arma Spec. This is their Ambi Safety Selector. But this guy's a little different because we do have a pin. We'll talk about this guy right here later on. And then they got a really neat idea. I don't know why anybody didn't think about it with this hand grip. And this is the safety selector detent spring that goes along with this guy to make it absolutely smooth. And we'll do that in the next series. Whew! With that, if you, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and have already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. Is that my microphone? God bless us, men, women, in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Is freedom is not free. Um, we're right now. We've got a lot of things going on in the country uh, that make me sick to my stomach. And they, yes, will have an effect on us down the road. Uh, anyone who is pro 2 way, yeah. So with that being said, y'all be good. In the great words of wisdom from the real Cobra Burnout, I always do it like this. Boom. Y'all be good.